Before this video begins, I have a short announcement to make. In my last video, I pinned a comment asking if anyone would be interested in taking online Zoom courses in composition with me. Well, after setting everything up, I'd like to announce that I will be doing just that. The goal of the lessons will be to offer some of the progressions, patterns, tricks, and principles that have helped me over the years in a one-on-one -on -one setting to anyone who wants to learn more. If demand or interest increases, I will offer group master classes on specific subjects. But to start out, I will only be doing one-on-one -on -one lessons in which I hope to offer a different perspective on composing than, say, your run-of-the-mill music course. Keep in mind, a general understanding of theory and music in general will be necessary. You don't need to be a professional by any means, but you should at least know the basics. It will also be somewhat necessary to have some basic piano skills, as lessons rely heavily on composition exercises that the student will need to practice on their piano or keyboard. The first lesson is free of charge and is linked in the description below. These can only be booked one week in advance as compared to paid lessons, which can be booked two months in advance. Now, let's get back to the video. In this video, we will be discussing the polka, which many assume to be a Polish dance. Obviously, it's a popular folk dance in Poland, especially in southern Poland, but it's more firmly established in the folk music of Bohemia, Germany, and Austria. So if the polka isn't Polish, where does it come from? The answer, on which most can agree, is that it's of Bohemian origin. Before we get into the more detailed origins and aspects of the polka, I'd like to lay out the general characteristics of the dance and music. The polka is a quick circle dance in two-quarter time. Musically, it is instantly recognizable by its jumping bass. In one of my older books on form, a typical polka rhythm is shown as such. This rhythmic pattern is meant to convey the general feeling of the melody. Of course it can be varied, but this is a good springboard to start off with. I think it should hold some importance because the jumping bass is not the main determining factor of a polka, as marches and ragtimes can also have jumping basses and can be played in a quick tempo, so I think using this rhythm as a foundation is a safe bet. If you look at a few polkas, you'll notice aspects of this rhythm used often. As far as the overall structure a polka should take, they are generally written in some type of ternary form and sometimes even rondo form, the importance here being the repetition of the initial theme in some form or another. The polka differs from the Polonaise in that its origin is decidedly more humble. It is said that the dance and accompanying music were developed around 1830 by a Czech handmaid by the name of Anna Schlezak in the bohemian town of Elbe Tynitz. Initially the polka was called the Polka, which means half in Czech. This most likely refers to the two-quarter time signature. In short time, the pulka, as it was then known, became instantly popular in Bohemia. Around this time, in the Bohemian capital of Prague, the name pulka changed to polka, which is the Czech language feminine of pol. It is said this change happened to honor the November uprising in Poland. Due to Bohemia's important role in the Austrian Empire and its proximity to Bavaria and Saxony, it is understandable that the polka quickly gained popularity in these regions as well. Many of the dance steps of the polka are apparently very similar to an older German dance known as the Hopsa, so this might explain why the polka was able to propagate so quickly in German-speaking territories. But ultimately, each region put their own stamp on the polka. Oddly, the polka, unlike the Polonaise, is still enormously popular to this very day in the folk music of many countries. The polka's characteristic jumping bass led to the English term umpa to refer to the general type of folk music in Germany because the polka was so ubiquitous in German folk music. But besides Alpine folk music, there is another country that to this very day is absolutely obsessed with the polka. This country is Mexico. I grew up in California and was in constant contact with Mexican music, and I always found it rather funny how Mexican music sounded so similar to German folk music. I always wondered why, though. The United States had a much more sizable amount of German immigration, so one would expect the opposite to be the case, but it isn't. Musica Norteña, or just simply Norteño, is a genre of music in northern Mexico and is incredibly similar to German and Austrian folk music. So how did Mexico's obsession with the polka come to be? I've read two theories, which I will lay out. The first goes as such. 
In the 1830s, the then Mexican-controlled Texas received a huge influx of German settlers, who brought their music and instruments with them. The music's popularity crossed the Rio Grande River and propagated across northern Mexico. Even after Texas became an independent republic and eventually a U.S. state, the cultural exchange remained nonetheless. The other theory is that the polka entered into Mexican folk music in earnest during the reign of Emperor Maximilian in Mexico during the 1860s. For those who don't know Emperor Maximilian, he was the brother of Austrian Emperor Franz Josef. During Maximilian's reign, a great deal of European music was brought to Mexico. Obviously Maximilian was an Austrian, so polkas were definitely a requirement. After Maximilian was sentenced to death and the Second Mexican Empire dissolved, the music nonetheless remained. I'm honestly more convinced by the Maximilian theory, but I think it's ultimately a mix of both theories. As to this very day, the influence of the polka on folk music in southern Texas remains very strong. Whether this came from Mexico or the other way around remains up for debate. But isn't it interesting to see the journey of how the creation of a Czech handmade in 1830s Bohemia is now found in the standard repertoire of Mexican folk and pop music. Music truly is a powerful thing, isn't it?